Hello, I'm Zoe Naylor and I'm on one of the most incredible adventures around the Northern Territory at the moment. Right now I'm standing in the middle of the West Macdonald Ranges and behind me you can see Mount Sonda, which is where Aboriginal artist Albert Namatjira painted one of his most recognisable landscapes. It's really easy to understand why this region was the inspiration to some of Australia's most significant art movements. On this journey, I'm hoping to learn more about art in the Red Centre. So I'm heading to Alice Springs, the hub for both galleries and artists. Along the way, however, I'm making a brief pilgrimage to Albert Namajira's old home and the beautiful old mission at Hermansburg, where some of the residents still remember him painting. Love to watch him uh, mixing the uh, paint and also drawing up um, like just with the uh, lead pencil before he uh, go over with the colour paint. Wow, that yeah. must have been a special. He shared with um, teaching other family members, like even his own sons were taught by him how to become an artist. One of Australia's most famous artists, Albert Namajira, lived just outside Hermansburg. He died in 1959 but the watercolour style in which he painted the surrounding region is still alive today, thanks to Indigenous artists like Peter Taylor. So did you ever meet Albert Namajira? Yes, met him. He'd come down to the exhibition in Adelaide and uh, looking at his work, you know. And, uh, and I showed him one of my little rubbish ones, but he said, oh, one day you'll paint like me. So what inspires you most about the landscape? Well, land itself, you know, the hills and trees and the grass and the ground, you know, different colour. You got your different times of day too, you know, it changes from one, you know, one hour to the other, you know. Two or three hours it changes colours and real nice, you know. To find out more about Indigenous art and the role it plays in the local culture, I caught up with Chris Borges from a Bantua gallery. A lot of places around Central Australia, it's a patrilineal society, so men pass down the stories to all of their children, and it's a lot more formal looking, using lots of concentric circles and travelling lines, whereas the women are a lot more free. The art behind us, is done by women from the Utopia area of Central Australia. It's contemporary abstract, it's colourful, and it's beautiful. And how important is art actually as a voice for those stories? Very important. It's an important tool for teaching about culture. And along with the paintings, often there are songs as well. And so it's not uncommon to see a whole group of people around one person painting and learning about stories and culture. From the beautiful paintings of Mabantua, I'm now going to check out the stunning work created by the Jumpy Desert Weavers and find out how the group nurtures and supports Aboriginal women. Jumpy Desert Weavers is a non-for-profit organisation. It's part of the Nanunjara, Pitunjara, Yunkunjara Women's Council. It helps to support Indigenous women on 28 different remote communities to uh, generate some kind of regular income through basket making and sculptures. I have to say of all of the artwork that I've seen so far, I think the baskets are topping the list. Oh, they're, they are. They're a bit fantastic. <laughs> They're bright and colourful and kooky and they're, the women have taken hours to make each piece. They have a lot of joy imbued in them. You can feel it, yeah, I you reckon. Can. You can feel it, it's true. Someone who also feels very passionate about Aboriginal culture is local artist and guide Jungler. And with his beautifully painted bicycles, he's found a way to share both his people's stories and his passion for the indigenous history of the area. This is the first bike that I actually painted. This is called Kunye Jokopa. It's my grandfather's dream. The gold there represents the snake, which is the ancestral snake from creation time. And it's actually an explanation about how everything that we see today came to exist. And what are you trying to achieve with your tours? 
I want people to experience something and take something away with them. So Dukua Bikes is um, showing people around my hometown, talking about the history of this area, um, the significance to Aboriginal people. My time in the Red Centre has been so special. Experiencing the changing light and colours has really helped me understand how it has been such an important influence on the artists who work here. Some of the landscapes I've seen driving through the West Macdonald Ranges have been absolutely glorious. And it's easy to see why the people who call this place home are so passionate and inspired by it.